Welcome to the Making a Multi-Million Dollar Med Spa Podcast, where we dive into the art and science of building a thriving med spa. I'm your host, Kat Toronto. In this podcast, we're all about empowering medical professionals and entrepreneurs like you with the knowledge, tools, and inspiration needed to elevate your practice to new heights. Whether you're just starting your journey or you're a seasoned expert looking to expand, this is the place where the industry's brightest minds come together to share their secrets to success. So sit back, relax, and get ready to unlock the potential of your med spa with the Making a Multi-Million Dollar Med Spa podcast. Let's go on this journey together, one success story at a time. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Making a Multi-Million Dollar Med Spa podcast. Today's episode is a special one for lots of reasons. Not only does this incredible episode come straight from the Expert Exchange course within Mint's online e-courses, but it is recorded conversation between renowned plastic surgeon, Dr. Jay Burns, and my very own husband and business partner, Matt Toronto. We recorded this episode as a two-part series with the interview with Dr. Burns kicking off the conversation. The second part is a Q&A where you can submit questions for Matt to answer. If you have questions, you can submit them at the link in the show notes, via email, or on our social media. We hope you love this sneak peek at the Expert Exchange and enjoy getting to know Matt a bit better. Enjoy. Welcome. Uh, today we're here with uh, Matt Toronto, one of my very good friends and uh, one of the uh, people I look up to and has taught me more about the med spa business than uh, likely most anybody um, in the world. And I suspect that if you're watching this on Mint, he's, uh, he and Kathy have taught uh, you guys as well. And so uh, I'm really excited today. We, we're on a series of interviewing uh, people. and I'm having so much fun in doing it. We did one with Jill Weibel. And so we, we decided, hey, we're going to have to obviously interview uh, Matt and, uh, and probably Kathy one of these days. But today it's Matt. So Matt, uh, um, uh, welcome. And uh, what a privilege to talk to you today. And uh, I just want to say hi. How are you doing? Doing great. I uh, I think this is such a great idea for the Mint e-courses. The, what you did with Jill Weibel was amazing. I know you got some really good ones coming up as well. Um, I think the next one might be Joel Cohen, which is really wonderful. Yeah. And I, I think it's great for people to get a little background on the people who have been in this industry a long time, learn from their successes, but also learn from their failures. And, and uh, you know, I think you and I are the same. You know, we got to be sponges, you know, in this industry. And when I see somebody doing something great, my attitude can't be, well, I'm jealous of them because they're so good. My attitude should be, I want to learn from them because they're so good. And we try to instill that to our staff too. So uh, I think these things are wonderful. I think they're a great learning opportunity. Yeah. So, so uh, for those of you, I suspect, I, I have to assume that there's, there, there might be somebody that's living under a rock out there that doesn't know uh, who you are. But um, uh, if you're on this call, you probably do. But let me just say that one of the things that, and I'd like for you to, you have, um, you know, men aesthetics, but you also have aesthetic care, which is your med spa. We're going to talk about your expansion uh, uh, as well. But um, the thing that that I can remember is just one of the most uh, successful uh, med spas in the country. And it's grown uh, crazy stats grown. Uh, I think you've said it's grown 10% per year every year you've had it. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, um, and I just think that's an amazing number, and I've you know the proof's in the pudding. Uh, I want to know. Uh, it's kind of like in my golf game. I, I don't want to learn from the pro who who shoots 78. I want to shoot. I want to learn from the pro that's got the lowest handicap, and um, and so I, that's that's what we're doing today. We're we're learning from the pro with a with a very a good handicap and a track record. And so how I I want to tell the people how I first met you is I was speaking for Saiton. And um, uh, you were, and I was speaking at a, a course talking about the clinical aspects and you were talking before me. And uh, I've heard a lot of people talk before me and after me and talk about how to run a business, but I'd never heard the things that you were saying. And so I whipped out a pen in about five minutes and started taking notes. And I've heard you talk, I don't know how many times. Well, I'm, all, I'm always taking notes. And it, it's recently as, as uh, uh, an event in Ohio, just a, a month or so ago, you know, I'd say, well, I don't have to take a pen out today, but 
darn it, I did it because I just, I'm learning every time you talk. And so tell us a little bit about aesthetic care and, and uh, how you got, how you, how did you get in the business? I mean, how, how did you, how did you, how did you get in this, this business, man? You know, I, I always tell people, in, and I don't know, Jay, if you've seen the movie Sliding Doors with Gwyneth Paltrow. You know, I haven't. Um, and if you have, watch it just because the, the premise, I think, is so amazing. So the movie starts and Gwyneth Paltrow is running to catch a train in London. And she barely makes it. She gets on, it's like a subway. And then the movie backs up and she's running to catch the train and she barely doesn't make it. And the movie splits into two. And it's what happens with her life because she made the train and what happens to her life because she didn't make the train. Oh, wow. And I always, think, I, I always think back on that because literally a phone call got me into this business. I had a, a friend from college who worked for a company that you probably know, Paget Instruments. They make instruments yeah. for plastic surgeons. Yeah. She, great job, traveled all over the world, all this stuff. And I had uh, recently gotten back from Spain. I um, spent a year in Spain, just kind of took a, a little year sabbatical. I wanted to explore Europe. I was 32 years old. And uh, when I got back, I didn't really know what I was going to do, but it was time to get to work and, and make some money. And she called, she said, hey, there's this company from Italy called Mattioli, and they're going to launch a thing called microdermabrasion into the United States. And this was like 95, 96, somewhere in there. And uh, she said, it looks really cool. You should take a look at it. So I got in touch with them. I met with them. I thought, you know, this is a really cool device. And my background had been in product development. I'd worked in product development, launching products into major retailers, things like that. And I thought, this is really, I like this kind of arena. So um, I, I helped them launch that product, just put them in touch with people. And then I thought, you know, I actually would like to sell this product. So I moved back to Kansas City and where I went to college at the University of Kansas. And I took a six state territory um, and I started selling that. And I thought, okay, this is, uh, this is fun. I enjoyed it. Um, well, at that time, Jay, you know, the laser companies were just kind of on the verge of coming out with some stuff. None of them used employees. They all used independent reps to market their stuff and then skincare products. So after a few years, I had, you know, a whole bag of goods that I was selling back then almost exclusively to plastics and derms, lasers, microdermabrators, skincare. Um, I had a van. I traveled like 70,000 miles a year doing demos, really enjoyed it. And as you remember, Jay, some of these early lasers were pretty archaic. Right. Um, and and I, are you based, are you still based in Kansas City at this in point? In Kansas City, I'm covering oh. Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas. And um, I became pretty good with lasers. I, I, I got to the point where I could train people on, on lasers. Um, this is back in the age of, you know, ProLite and the Epi laser and Cool Touch. And we called it the Cruel Touch, if you remember. Oh, yeah. Man, every time you fired, it felt like a nail going through somebody's head. Totally. And um, I really enjoyed it and I, I was pretty successful at it. But what I started to realize after doing that for five or six years, and here I'm talking to a doctor and I'm going to insult doctors, is the majority of doctors I worked with are just, they just weren't good business people. Right. And I just saw them doing things that just didn't make sense to me and struggling in areas. And I thought, listen, if I'm going to be good at what I do, selling equipment to doctors, I should also be good at helping them do well with the equipment I'm selling. So I thought, why don't I open a clinic, a small little clinic? Um, this was 2001. And in that clinic, I will only use the things I'm selling so that now I can go in and say, listen, I'm not just trying to sell this to you. I use this every day. I have a nurse, an esthetician. So I rented a thousand square feet, four treatment rooms, and we started a little med spa. It was actually the, the second one in this geographic territory. And luckily I found a great nurse and we started using it. And, and that idea really worked. It gave me more credibility. I was able to help on more than just equipment. And I really thought that's all the clinic was going to be just a little kind of a demo area that we use the equipment we sell. But what surprised me is I ended up liking that much better than I liked selling equipment. I really enjoyed the retail aspect of that business and the customer service. So over time, I just faded away from selling equipment. I focused on growing aesthetic care. And what you said is probably one of the things I'm most proud of. You know, when you're new, you can grow yeah. 100% from year one to year two yeah. and 50% say, but what I really want is let's never stop growing. And so what I'm very proud of is, is we've never grown by anything less than 10%, even after 20 years. And I think that's, that's just a testament to, it's a testament to my staff is what it is. But after proving that I could make that med spa successful, I realized I really would enjoy getting on the consulting side and sharing what I'm learning every day with 
doctors and business people around North America and helping them do this the right way. So that's really was the, the evolution of, at that time it's called um, Aesthetic Consulting Group and then we changed it to Mint Aesthetics. So it's really evolved into the clinic, which we love and, and we'll talk more about that. Um, and then Mint Aesthetics, and we've been fortunate enough now, we've worked with over 1600 clinics. Uh, we actually have clinics now in Australia, Puerto Rico, England. Um, so we're getting a little bit of international flavor. Um, but we really, you know, my wife and I, Kathy, just love sharing what we do. And I think the credibility that we have is we're not somebody who, hey, we ran a good med spa for two years, we sold it, made some money, and now we're going to teach people. We do this every day, every day. And, and so we try to tell people we practice what we preach. And if we're telling you something works, it's only because we've tried it and we've made it work. So uh, that's kind of the story of, of myself and Kathy and, and where we've evolved into well, we're going to talk about, uh, uh, you know, how your practice really took off when you finally wised up and added Kathy, but uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about that a, a little bit later. But what I'd love to do is to know, and what, what intrigues me is, you know, you've, you've got a lot of pearls, you know, you've, 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 uh, there's a lot of things that I would say, you know, I just started out in a solo practice, as you know, that you've helped me with over the last couple of years. A, uh, and I've and I've just got a lot of a lot of the things that we do, the way that we market, the way that we uh, I, I built my practice um, so that I could market the way you do, the, the way that you've taught me. And you've got a, all these pearls about your your perspective on management. And I'm going to have you talk a little bit about that. We don't have enough time in an hour to hear your lecture, you know, but on the other hand, how did you, I'd love, you know, we haven't talked about how you grew up or what, it, what you know, what, what happened before 32 years of age uh, when, you, when you got the, the microdermabrasion uh, uh, um, inside? What, what do you think, what made you the good businessman? Who influenced you? How did you come up with these pearls? That would be interesting to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's always fun to look back. And, and I remember I was at a meeting once and, and it wasn't a business meeting. It was like a, a motivational meeting or something. And one of the big questions was, if you had to point out one person who influenced your life, who would it be? And um, I had a really struggle with that. My parents got divorced when I was very young. I really don't have much memory of my father. He's a military. And, and uh -huh. I think until I was 20 years old, I saw him like four or five times and that's it. Yeah. So uh, my mother loving mother, very devout Christian woman, but somebody who looking back, didn't spend a lot of time with her kids. I mean, it, she kind of lived her life more for what was going on in her life. Right. Um, and um, so I grew up, it, I became very independent at a very early age. We had no money. Yeah. And I remember, you know, my first job um, in Flagstaff, Arizona, you know, in sixth grade, I got a paper route. I had like 10 lawns that I mowed. I just knew if I wanted something and I had some friends who were pretty well off, if I wanted something, I had to figure out a way to get it. Do you know an outstanding med spa, doctor, manager, provider, or groundbreaking treatment that is reshaping the industry? Nominate them for Mint's Clinics to Watch. We are so excited to launch this initiative to recognize the true leaders in our industry. Our aim is to spotlight those leading the way to excellence, providing valuable insights for others to pave their path to success. Check out our website for past winners of the Clinics to Watch. You can also nominate someone at the link in our show notes. Share your nominations and be part of celebrating the industry leaders. Let's inspire and build success together. And so... I think it instilled in me a pretty good work ethic. Yeah. Um, and then in, in high school, you know, my senior year of high school, I worked 35 hours a week. I took an early class and I got out of school at one o'clock. Um, but I realized, listen, if I'm going to work this hard, I'm going to find jobs that I love. And I worked at a sporting goods store and it was so much fun. And Dwayne Morris, the owner of that sporting goods store, taught me a lot because he created an amazing, fun work atmosphere. I worked there all through college too. I didn't make a lot of money there, but my gosh, it was a fun place to work. Great staff. And then in college, I decided, you know, I, I want to go to college. My brother and sister didn't. I was the first one in my family, um, but I didn't want to take student loans. So I thought, you know, well, I won't go four years. I'll go five years. I'll take some summer school. I won't take more than 12 hours a semester and I'll work 40 or 50 hours a week. 
people say, oh my God, that must have been a struggle. And I look back and say, no, it was fun because I had fun jobs. I worked at the sporting store. I bartended at night at the most popular bar at KU. I arranged trips for a travel agent. I couldn't go on fancy spring break trips because I didn't have any money. I said, but I want to go. So I approached the travel agent and said, what if I get a bunch of people to go? Would you send me for free? And they said, yes. And so they said, if you get 10 people to go to Cancun, we'll pay you. And I got 65. And so they paid me <laughs> and three of my friends. The next year I did to Bahamas with 85 people. And I just realized on it, man, if you put your nose to it, you can achieve a lot. And if you get creative. So I got out of college and to be honest, you know, I had a very average GPA. Um, my first semester was a train wreck, but I ended up with about a 3.0 in public speaking and strategic communications. And which to be honest, was not a hard major. It was a major I could get through and work a lot. I knew I kind of just needed a degree. But, you know, in every job interview after college, and I was very fortunate, I got some good job offers. Nobody talked about my grades. They talked about my work experience. And that I think that's what impressed them. So I would tell you the way that my life turned out of living in a family with no money, single parent home, having to rely on myself taught me a lot that I can do things. You know, I can make things work. I can figure it out. So I, I look back, I was really blessed that my mother loved us a lot. My brother and sister you know, we had a good relationship. It wasn't like I had a horrible home life. Um, I just started to rely on myself at an early age. Um, and then I started realizing that the things I don't know, I need to really look at people who have done, like we said earlier, great things. And I need to be a little bit of a sponge and emulate those. So yeah. it just turned out, and as you know, I, I tend to talk a lot, you can tell now. Um, I ended up having a pretty successful career on the public end of business, selling, marketing stuff, because I kind of a little bit of a ham. And, uh, and then I just stumbled into a wonderful career in aesthetics, which I love. So, so, you know, I'd say marketing and service, uh, I mean, you know, you've got a, you've got a great, uh, you know, clinical, I think, you know, from selling those wares and understanding about it and running a clinic, I think you have an unusually good, uh, appreciation for what makes sense clinically, but also, you know, for me, you know, the way that you have emphasized service and, and work environment and all of that. It sounds like uh, the sporting goods store where there was a great work environment impacted you a lot. Um, and, and, and I guess the, the marketing, everything, you got that from your college degree and-, and, and No, and you know, are, are not so much you? college, to be honest. I had a very kind of, and it's still my, my belief in marketing. I'll try just about anything. Right, you come right. up with an idea, you say, oh, you should do a billboard. Well, fine, I'll try to billboard. I tried it. I tried it three times. It didn't work very well. And then I realized I'm not going to do that again. Okay. Just um, trial and error. Trial just and trial error. error. But what I realized, Jay, early on is there will never be a more powerful way of market than face to face. That yeah. is it, hands down. There's nothing that beats that. And then my wife happens to be a big fan of Tony Robbins. And I, you know, mixed feelings on him, but she loves him. And uh, one thing I love that he says, you want to get somebody into your business, make an irresistible offer. And it really struck home with me because and Jay, you've heard me say this before. I do not care how much money I make on you the first time you come to my clinic. I don't care if I lose money. What I care is that you come. I care that you got there and you were able to experience us because I believe that we're so good at what we do that we have a really good chance of retaining your business. It's not going to happen every time. So I'm a big advocate of getting people in, whether it's with a uh, a complimentary treatment, a $200 gift card that they got through some sort of marketing, something that's irresistible that you say, you know, I might as well use that. This is a great deal. And then I'm going to wow you with what we're able to, to the customer service, the consult, the way we treat you, the way we follow up, hopefully to a point that you're going to say, man, if I ever go anywhere else, I'm going there. Yeah. So now we're back. I had a little uh, welcome to the world of Zoom. And uh, when you lose total power, it's really bad on the internet connection. So uh, we're back. And Matt, you were talking a little bit about, um, you know, I was asking you a little bit about how do you learn all this stuff? Because I'm just fascinated at how much knowledge you, you have and, and I use all of it. And so um, you were talking about how a little bit of it was trial and error. Um, and uh, you've tried a lot of things. And so I might even just go in a different direction now that we've refocused. I'd love to ask you, hey, you know, what has been your, you know, you said the billboards didn't work. What, what, what do you think your biggest challenge was? You know, you, you, you founded Aesthetic Care, you thought it was going to be one thing, you loved it, and here you go. Um, you know, what are, you know, either one of the things you would have done differently or one of the biggest obstacles in that early stage? Um, uh, tell us about those things so we could try to avoid those. 
Yeah, I mean, it's such a good, it's always good, I think, to look back, because if I, knowing what I know now, 20 years ago, when I started aesthetic here, my God, I would have gotten to where I am here so fast. Oh, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Only because, that's, you know, we learn. That's why people are watching. They want to yeah. get to where, where, where you are quicker. So, quicker. yeah, tell us how to so, do that. One of my favorite stories is, so when I opened Aesthetic Care, and, and as you know, one of the hard things about this industry, it's kind of an expensive business to open because of our equipment, right? Sure. You, yeah. open an ice, you open an ice cream store, you got to have the space and you get your initial inventory of ice cream, and then you just keep buying it as you sell it. You know, we're buying $200,000 pieces of equipment, 150, 250. And, and so it, it's expensive. So I had saved up some money and then I borrowed some money from a bank um, and it was just me. And so I didn't have a lot of financial wherewithal to do elaborate marketing things. I'm not going to, I didn't, couldn't go hire a marketing company and stuff. And this is before websites. So, you know, one of my favorite learning lessons was, is I literally would go into parking lots personally and I'd print flyers and I'd put them in windshields of cars. I look back now and say, okay, I would never do that. In fact, it may not be legal to do that anymore, but the weirdest thing is it worked. People would say, hey, I saw this flyer about a place that does Botox and laser hair removal and stuff. And I'm like, how simple of a marketing strategy was that? And yeah. based on financial ability, then I called a buddy of mine who had two high school boys. And I said, could I hire your two boys to go into select neighborhoods and spend a couple days hanging door flyers on people's front door, which again, I don't even know if you can do anymore. Um, so we picked out neighborhoods and I paid him 10 bucks an hour. And, you know, back then 20, I mean, these are high school kids. That's a good hourly wage. Right. And they went through these neighborhoods, hanging up little door flyers on doors. And guess what? It worked. It, 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 it's a numbers game. I mean, everyone didn't work, but we probably did, you know, 5,000 of those. And all of a sudden we started getting clients from that. And so I started thinking there's got to be better ways than just at that point, newspaper, magazines, radio, TV, the traditional stuff. And I've tried all of those. I got to be honest, traditional marketing does not work so well for me. And if it works for other people, fine. I don't do any of it. I do a little bit of radio only because Allergan gives me 50% um, of the money back, you know, in a co-op program. So we do a little bit of that for cool sculpting. But we just started to realize that we can do, we can market in a way that our competitors are not doing. And that really has been our philosophy. Let's market in a unique way. And as this evolved, what we learned was if we can come up with an irresistible offer, that most people will not refuse that. And so we started getting involved in the community with clothing stores and, and jewelry stores and real estate agents and interior designers and, and high-end restaurants and going and talking to the owners and the managers and saying, hey, you know what? Wouldn't you love to do something nice for your good clients? Well, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of $200 gift cards. You don't have to pay for it. And you can give it to a good client as a thank you. But before you do that, I want you to come to my clinic. I want you to see the clinic. I want you to have a couple of treatments because I want you to feel good that you're sending somebody to a good place. So we build a relationship with the decision maker to business. We make sure they like what we're doing. Then we offer them a customer service tool a thank you, a $100 gift card, a $200 gift card, a complimentary $189 hydrofacial. And we let them give those to their good clients, no charge to them. So why wouldn't they do it? They have nothing to lose. The key point to remember in this is develop that relationship with the decision maker first. I did a consulting job with a group in Atlanta year, a number of years ago, and they called me about two months later and said, you know, we had a couple questions. Oh, by the way, your gift card thing doesn't work. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? They go, well, I sent so-and-so out. I said, go to 10 different businesses, give them each 10 $100 gift cards and ask them to give them out. And I said, whoa, 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 you missed an important part. <laughs> they don't know you. They have zero clue what you do. And if you're good, you got to get them to your clinic first, teach them about what you do, give them a treatment. So they're kind of excited about your business. And then they're excited about referring it. And so Jay, I will tell you, if I, if I could have one thing to do over again, day one, I would have, I didn't have the time at the point, hire what I call an external marketing person, just even part-time, day or two a week. Somebody who is well-versed in the community, you know, knows their way around, knows a bunch of people and can talk to a brick wall. And they're not selling anything. Your job is to be my eyes and ears in Kansas City. You look for opportunities with small to mid-sized businesses, charities, women's groups, events, healthcare, where we can have a, a booth. You look for opportunities for us to get active in the community. 
And Jay, it's the best marketing we do. And it's so inexpensive. It takes time, but not so much money. Right. And, so the, and the, it, the, the expense is the, the salary of that marketer. Yeah. And think about this. You find somebody, even somebody who's already a client or patient of yours, and you have a good relationship, you love them. Maybe they're a stay-at-home mom who would love to work a day and a half a week. And I pay, Lori Morrissey is who I use. And um, I pay her 25 bucks an hour and free services. She is worth her weight in gold, Jay. I mean, do you know how much I pay her compared to a full page ad in a magazine? It's right. less. Right. And I've got a person dedicated to me. Um, I was, remember, go ahead. No, what all I was going to say was, I, I want to get to so many things that we're, that we're talking about. And that's just one example. And I'm assuming that, um, I mean, I've looked at it myself, so I know the answer to this, but these pearls are expanded within mint uh and and uh, yes aesthetic. so everything the e-courses and yes all the e-courses i make i make all my staff watch that you know i, I i've i've been privileged to participate um in the program itself uh and, and give some uh clinical information and i've really enjoyed that being able to do this interview mm -hmm. but i want to make sure that that uh I was thinking about how we're going to do it because I just don't, all these lectures and all these points that you're making, they can have access to that through signing up for, for Mint and, and, mm -hmm. and actually going and watching it. There's so much information there. And so uh, that's just one example. And that, that we're implementing that now, you know, the, the fact that, that you, this irresistible offer is something that, um, that we have utilized, uh, get, you know, the, the marketing parties that you have, uh, you know, they ought to go check that out and how you talk about that, because I built my practice so that I could have a little place uh, like you taught me. And it's so easy for these women to bring in their friends because they're heroes right there. They get a hundred dollar gift certificate. The person that gives it gets 350 or something like that. And once we get them in, it's just, it's worked beautifully. I'm just going to give you kudos for that. And well, you know, it, and you're right. And it's so easy. We had one the other night. Um, had 10 women show up, eight of them left having booked a consult, which is what I've used a victory. And they had fun. They had some wine, they had some hors d'oeuvres. They each got a hundred dollar gift card. The host, because she had 10 people got $700 credit. Yeah. You know, less than 10, three. And really what that took me is two hours of time. And the way that I look at it, Jay, is my average client, not a good client, an average client spends about $3,000 a year. Right. So out of those 10 women, what if I get one average client? I paid for it, but I'm going to get more than one. I know I'm going to get more than one. Right, right. So, um, so let, let me let me ask you right now. So you're now you're right at 20 years into the mm -hmm. business. And not, yeah, you actually you are 20 years. Is that 20? Yeah. And so, tell me what um, uh, tell me what excites you today about aesthetic care, and what's what's uh, um, uh, you said what's the biggest. What's the biggest, uh, the one thing, I think that's a great pearl. What's the one thing that you would do differently? And I want to make sure that everybody heard that. And that would be to hire an external marketer and do the things. Get active you in your community, be visible in your community. But I will tell you, I, uh, I heard a quote years ago by Richard Branson and who owns Virgin, you know, very kind of eclectic guy, really very adventuresome guy. found the perfect trio, virtual, quick, and free. Mint is hosting one-hour clinical trainings for eCourse subscribers on the first Tuesday of each month at 2.30 p.m. Central Time. We will be covering clinical topics like Sculptra, Genius, BBL, and Hydrofacial. Check out the link below in our show notes to learn more. Hi, all. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. We are always looking for feedback to make it better, so be sure to give us your feedback at the link in the show notes. If you're loving the podcast, we would really appreciate it if you would share it with a friend, rate us five stars, and write a review. This really helps other clinics and industry professionals find our podcasts. Thanks. Now let's get back to the episode. Um, and it's, Jay, it's what I run my business on, period. And it's train your staff so well that they could leave you and get any job they want. Treat them so well that they will never leave you. And I will tell you, if you do that, it's almost impossible to fail. And you know this because you've known how we work things. The best money I ever spent, period, and I look at it as a marketing expense, is making my staff better. So when we wanted to get better at resurfacing, what did we do? 
you're considered one of the elite resurfacing doctors in the world. I paid you to fly to Kansas City and do a private resurfacing course for us. When we wanted to get better at scar revision, I flew Jill Weibel, and you guys aren't cheap, to come up, spend time with us, and teach us hands-on. And I look at it and say, why wouldn't I do that? If wow. somebody is so good at something, why am I going to waste the time trying to get there? I'm going to figure out, I'm, I'm going to learn from them. And I do this all the time, Jay. I was speaking at an at event in Washington, D.C. a number of years ago, and there's a nurse practitioner there who I'd done a little work with, and she wanted to meet with me. She went through her numbers. Jay, this girl was, she was doing like 1.6 million a year in injectables just by herself. And she told me she had developed this passion for earlobes and weird things. And I said, I really love you, your passion. How much for you to come to Kansas City for a day? I'll pay your airfare, your travel to come work with my staff and just share what you've known, you've learned. She said, 4,000 bucks, done, do it. And people, I work with clinics say, oh, that's a lot of money. That's just barely over one good client per year. Yeah. And that's the way I look at it. And so I'm going to find the best of the best. And I, I know if I pay them enough, they will teach me what they know. And we're never going to stop doing that. Right. So, um, man, that's just, that's so valuable. Um, again, I'm, I'm, I want to, I want to stop interviewing and, and, and take more notes. Uh, and uh, so I, it, that's great. So tell me, um, what do you think has been, um, uh, these are all the pearls they can get with men. But what I'm trying right. to do today is figure out, I mean, I just, I'm fascinated with how, what drives you and how you got there and how, you know, how can you, um, you know, not everybody's Matt Toronto, uh, but you know, what, what drove you and how you can motivate people, um, you know, to, 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 to implement these things. Because I think the the biggest thing that I've found is that, you know, uh, you know, I think I'm a, you and I both are visionaries, but uh, it takes somebody to help us execute and uh, I know, I know who your executor is. Uh, I, it's probably you because you started that way. But I know Kathy is one of the best um, people to execute a plan that I've ever Far seen. Far more organized than I am. Oh, yeah. She's, she's yeah. amazing. So tell me a little bit about uh, how, how you guys met. Uh, I, this is also a personal journey as well. So I, I, uh, uh, I've, I've had a joy of, of just being with you guys over the last few years. And I'm going to comment on that in a minute, but I'd love to know exactly uh, how you guys met and how you guys got together, both business and, and, and uh, personally. Well, and I love the story. Um, before I go into that one thing you said, I, I will tell you something I've learned. Hire based on your weaknesses. You know, you oh, and I are big picture people. Right. I don't like details. I, it's, it's not something I enjoy. I'm probably not good at it. So I need to find people who can handle that portion for me. Um, I don't need to hire myself because there's certain things I'm good at, certain things I'm not good at. Um, and that kind of morphs well into Kathy. You know, Kathy has been in this industry for 20 years. She started in a very high-end skincare line. Then she um, got into medical aesthetics. She sold lasers. She ran a laser training uh, facility in Phoenix for years in Scottsdale. And we were at a meeting in, in Florida years ago. And I met her and she was right. We happened to sit next to each other. We chatted. Um, I had gone through a divorce. I was single. She was still married, but we just became friends. I saw her maybe twice a year at fun meetings. We started to do some work with Cyton, with BTL. And, and so we just kind of became peers. Yeah. And we were at a laser conference one, uh, one year in Telluride. And we we're out talking and it turned out that her marriage had ended and she was single. And we chatted a little bit and and we just start texting each other. It's weird thing. And I don't like to text. I text slowly, you know, with one finger. Um, <laughs> but we just start texting each other. Turns out she's a big football fan. And I'm a huge football fan, as you are. And uh, she grew up in Tulsa. OU was the team. You know? And it turns out, after about six months of chatting on the phone, uh, OU was playing KU and Lawrence. And then the Chiefs were playing the next day. And I said, you know, if, if you're free that we can come on up, we'll go watch OU play at KU. We'll watch the Chiefs play. We'll have a little sports weekend. And she did. Six months later, we were engaged. There you go. And, and it, it's just been a, a blessing to me because I got to tell you, I was thinking, you know, I like being single. I was a single dad and a great daughter. Um, I said, hey, I don't think I'll ever get remarried. And then she messed that thought up. Um, but she was too good. I mean, she's just such a wonderful human being. And she's a wealth of knowledge in this industry. And what you said, she brings a different perspective. She is organized. I mean, she has her calendar out. She has timing. And I'm just like big picture all over the road. 
Um, but so she really runs, you know, she's a, a wonderful technician with, with procedures and, and I probably have a little bit more business knowledge. And so I think the team has worked really well. She puts a lot of input to aesthetic care. You know, back when I said hire based on your weaknesses, we are so blessed to have an amazing manager in Rick and assistant manager in Tracy that we feel comfortable. I know your staff, Jay, is amazing. Kathy and I can leave on vacation and know that nothing misses a beat. And I really encourage everybody out there, your success is going to be dependent on who you surround yourself with. And this is true in life, right? Not just in business. It's whether it's your spouse, your, fr- your peer group, who, who do you, you know, show me your friends, I'll show you your future type thing. Your staff, you guys, it's all your staff. And the best book I can ever re- recommend to anybody to read is The Customer Comes Second. Right. And it's all about surround yourself with amazing people. Right. So, so it's interesting. I, I think this is an important point. I'll take a little diversion for just a second. I wanted to talk about what Kathy adds, but what I was going to ask you was you, most people would say you're the manager, but you hired a manager. So, so tell me, you know, and you told me right from the start, you know, the first thing you have to do is hire a manager. Uh, I was making mistakes because I was a surgeon. I was busy. I cared about the thing, but I just didn't have enough time. And, you know, as surgeons and a lot of people think, well, gosh, that's, that may be a hundred thousand dollars or whatever it is. It's a, it's a, it's your, it's a big salary for somebody who doesn't quote produce revenue. So people don't do it. And I, I hired one and I, and, and what I would love to know is we'd say, well, wait a minute, man, I thought you were like the best manager ever and Kathy's an executor. So tell me how you delegate those and what roles your managers play and, and why that's really important. I think that would help people understand. Yeah. And I think it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, because if you do it, everybody needs to do it because because everybody would think, Hey, you don't need a manager. You got Matt Toronto and Kathy mm-hmm. Toronto. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, and there's two different stages, I think, uh, of any business. One, when you're brand new, you can really only do what you can afford to do. And when I was new, I couldn't afford to hire a, a manager. I mean, I didn't have the money to do it. But a lot of times, and I've changed the way I'm thinking, it's, some, it's very important sometimes to take a step back to allow yourself to take two steps forward. And so we got to a size that there's just no way I personally could do what needs to be done every day, every hour of every day to make sure it runs in, in a in a way that people are very impressed all the time with our business. And so I would highly recommend that once you get to the point financially where it makes sense to hire somebody to handle the details and going back, I'm not a detail person. And managing a staff is is not an easy job. And especially when you get to our size, I have 30 women that I work with. And my manager is way better at at the day-to-day dealing with, you know, any type of issues going on than I am, because I'm very simplistic. I would say, oh, we'll just get over it. Don't worry about that. But he looked into it. He, he, uh, he's just a blessing. And the thing is, his, his experience and my assistant manager's experience is in retail. And I love that because we are a retail business. We're no different than a jewelry store. People don't need what we, we do, and we're not covered by insurance. And so it's all about customer service, which they have such great experience in. So making sure you are able to look at yourself and understand what time do I have to put in the business? What are my skills? And more importantly, what do you love doing? I want to focus on things I'm good at and that I love. And the other things, I need somebody else to do that for me. And you and I have talked, Jay, you know, at our point in our career, and you and I are about the same age, it's so much more about quality of life. It is. It's, you know, we've been blessed and we've had some success in this industry. Um, I get up every morning and I love my job, but I also love playing golf. Okay. And I want to have a balance and I love spending time with my wife and and my kids. So I want to balance and to, for me to have that balance, it's not going to be me spending 80 hours a week trying to have handle every detail of my clinic. I need some help. Right. Hey, well, you're, you uh, this is, uh, uh, I have to tell you, Matt, this is, this is an easy interview for me because I don't even have to ask the questions. You're already telling me some of the things I want to know, you know, like uh, I'd like the readers to know, you know, what fills your tank? I think you just told me family and, and even your, your, your job uh, is, mm-hmm. is really important and, and, and really fills your tank. And then, and uh, you know, what, what are the things that, 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 that doesn't fill your tank? I assume it's the, it's the details and the execution, but, you know, cause you want to try to avoid that. Yeah. And uh, you know um, uh, and, you know, your hobby is golf and uh, anything else you want to expand on that about what fills your tank, things you try to avoid that, 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 you know, I try to avoid uh, things that, that bring me down. I try to identify it and mm-hmm. try to avoid that in my life if I can. And any, any thoughts on that? 
just yeah. personally. I, I just want the biggest thing is long meetings. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, long meetings you know, that, that aren't productive. I just, it, that it's just like nails on a chalkboard to me. Let's, let's sit down, let's figure it out. Let's move on. Um, I will tell you, you know, Jay, when I look at, at my job and what I do, I love the creative aspect of it. I love researching that next great technology and talking to people, you know, and really vetting technology before we add it because I only want to have things on our menu that we truly believe in. And that's exciting to me. Yeah. I love exploring new marketing opportunities. I love growing through adding staff. And I will tell you that if I've had outside consultants come and look at my books, and do you know the first thing they say to me? Your payroll's too high. And I say, listen, I understand that, but I don't think that's the right answer in our industry. Because if I want the very best employees I need to pay them better than my competitors pay. And I do. And a lot of people would say, you know, you could really squeeze a lot more net out of your business. And I'm not trying to sound altruistic. It's fun to make good money. We have a nice living. My biggest joy, and it's not even close, is providing amazing jobs for wonderful people and watching them blossom. I, I literally, I will talk to some of my staff and see who have been with me. You know, you're about to see a woman, a nurse who's worked for me for 20 years. She's coming down to see you. Um, I have a gal, her name's Jessica, who you'd hire 50 times over, always hire farm, farm girls. They work their tail off. And no question. No this question. girl, she started with me and I took her from a, a massage therapy job. She was making $18 an hour. I thought I was gonna have a massage, stupid idea. It's not a smart thing to add one massage therapist. She was so good though, that we started training her in some things long, like skin tightening treatments that aren't very exciting, but she loved them because to her 30 minutes is nothing. She was doing 90 minute massages. She liked the industry so much since she's worked for me in 13 years, she's gotten married. She's had three children. She put herself through nursing school. And last year she made $130,000. When I see that, I'm telling you, it gives me goosebumps. And, the and, trans and I flew my team up to spend a day or two with, with her to mm -hmm. figure out how to do what she does well. And uh, cause I'm learning from you. So that I just, I just did what you said you did. I, I, I flew my staff yeah. up to work with Jessica. That's really an interesting story, how it ties together there. Oh my God. And it just, to me, it makes everything we do worth it. When I see people that I can help them achieve goals in life and blossom their career, because I tell everybody, and this is the, I think this is important. We have a very elaborate hiring process and it's on our e-courses, but the final interview is me when I offer the job. And the first thing I do, Jay, in that interview is, hey, listen, I'm going to tell you why you should not work here. One, the world is filled with average people, and that's fine. If you're one of those, do not work here. We do not settle for average, okay? I only am going to hire people who have this strong, strong desire to be the best of the best. And I'm going to give you all the tools, but I can only do so much. You have to have that desire, okay? If you're somebody who loves to gossip, backstab, create a little drama, that's fine. Don't work here. Because we don't tolerate that. We want to have a place that on your way to work, you're excited to be here. This is a family, okay? If you're somebody who believes you have to have a specific job description and anything outside of that description you're not going to do, don't work here. Because I don't care if you're the best nurse here, you're going to clean a treatment room and you're going to empty trash and you're going to check somebody out the front desk because we all do it. Because I tell all my staff every day, walk through the door with one thought in your head. Today... I'm going to make all my coworkers' job better. If we do that every day, can you imagine the work environment? And so, and then I say, listen, I'm going to offer you this job. I'm going to expect you to be the best of the best. I'm going to expect you to work your tail off. I'm going to expect you to treat people incredibly well, but in return, I'm going to pay you incredibly well. You're going to love working here because we laugh and we have fun. We have bonuses. We go on vacation together. You're going to love this work environment but you got to add to that. You can't detract, distract or detract from it. And so I'm just very honest. And then I tell them in 90 days, you and I are going to sit down again. And I'm going to ask you, did you make a good choice? You've been here three months. Look back. Did you make a great choice? Are you excited about this position? You look at it as a long-term opportunity. You feel like you're a good fit for the team. After I see you work for 90 days, I'm going to let you know, did I make a good choice? Because I believe the Nordstrom motto of hiring, hire the smile, train the skill. Hire based on what you cannot teach. We can teach anybody with a brain to operate a laser, a nurse to do injections, to work the front desk. We can teach that. I can never teach somebody to be happy. 
ethical, passionate, fun. And that's what I'm looking for. So I hire based on what I cannot teach. And I just make sure we're very clear that we only want the best of the best. You know, it's really funny, Matt. I, 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 uh, this interview is about you and not me, but it's, it's just so interesting. That's why I like these interviews, right? Because I know the principle, the direction, the overarching uh, thing that you just talked about. But what every time I talk to you, the little details, the reason I want to take a note is I haven't done some of those specifics about this is not a place for you to work. That's why these interviews are really important and why people listening to this interview should watch our next follow-up where they can actually ask Q&As and they say, uh -huh. you know, the, the kind of person that said, hey, these gift cards don't work, you yeah. know, or whatever is the st stumbling block that you've, you've watched you or Matt, because if you're listening to me, I've got, it's just amazing for me to listen to you and I've implemented all of this in my new business that's been open about seven or eight months. We're doing extremely well by God's grace and by your teaching because I did that. I just interviewed a girl um, this week and she was making a lot more money being a Durham PA. And I said, I can't offer you that right off the bat, but here's what I can offer you. I can offer you better than that in five years or in two years or in three years, but I have to teach you and I have to educate you. And this is the culture. So I said, just come and spend a couple of days being here with our in, in our culture and, and she actually took a um a cut in salary uh mm -hmm. and said because i just want this culture i want this work environment i'm young i see the future and i really that's because um you know i emphasize what you emphasize and that's education yeah. and culture well, it, and no it, gossip and that kind yep. of thing. it's so true people don't lo leave great jobs i mean sometimes listen you're gonna lose somebody somebody gets transferred or something sure, to husband. Sure. but if i the first thing I do when I start consulting with a business, especially businesses that a lot of come to us and they're, they're struggling. I said, let's go over your staff. How long have they been here? I just worked with the group. Um, I can't remember if it was in Phoenix or it was a phone interview and, or a Zoom interview. And I went through their staff and it was like, oh, she's been here for two months. She's been here for seven months. She's been here for a year. She's been here for three months. They've been open for six years. And they, they all, I said, well, why so sure? Oh, you know, nobody wants to work. Everyone leaves. They quit. They, they're not good. These, I, everyone's crazy. And I, the first thing I said to this doctor, I said, it's you. I said, yeah, you're not paying me to, be, to blow wind up your skirt. If you have that much turnover in all areas, you're the common denominator. So let's talk about your work environment. And it's, it's really a slap in the face, but it's, a, it's an eye-opening, you know, deal. If, if people leave you on a regular basis, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. You're either hiring the wrong people. But most likely you have a work environment that's not worth staying at. Yeah, you know, I, I think that, you know, in my personal life, as well as my business life, I just think it's important, uh, you know, even in my personal life, I surround myself with men who I want, I've given them permission to tell me that I've got spinach on my teeth because mm -hmm. I don't want to walk around with spinach on my teeth. Yeah, and the good. point is, is that like you, that. Need, you, need, you need wise counsel, right? You need it mm -hmm. in life because lack of self-awareness is a death sentence. And, and so your consulting is, is what, what you're doing. You're, I think that's fantastic and why people should actually hire you guys to come in like you've done for me and, and help me say, hey, this is the problem and let's go fix it. So um, it, let me ask you this. What do you think, um, uh, we, we've got a few minutes left, but what, is your, uh, what do you think your greatest accomplishment is? Need an onboarding program for your medical aesthetic clinic? The Mint Aesthetics online e-courses are the perfect resource for your entire team. Our all-inclusive annual rate grants your team unlimited access to over 30 courses, more than 170 hours of educational and hands-on video, and well over 600 downloadable resources. The best part? We're constantly adding fresh, valuable content. Check out the Mint e-courses for your team today. Visit us online at mintaesthetics.com or give us a call at 913-338-2553. Get started on your journey to excellence today. Oh my gosh, without a doubt is, is the relationships that I've helped form, I form with, with my staff. You know, Jay, you know, I'm blessed to have a wonderful family. My staff is the biggest blessing outside of my family in my life because I look at them as great friends. 
I look at them as people that I learn from. I look at them as people that I can help them achieve their goals in life. You know, we had a girl and this just warmed my heart. I was pulling in my parking lot. She was pulling in. We were walking in together. Her name's Chrissy. And she said, listen, I got to tell you something. Um, I was thinking about you today and or, or on Sunday over the weekend. She goes, I just can't express how blessed I am to be here. Um, she said, I was going to pay a bill that two years ago, she's only been there two years and she's a superstar. She goes, I wouldn't, I would have had to call and budget out. I, I wouldn't have been able to afford to pay it. So not only was it easy for me to pay because I'm, you're paying me so well, but my husband told me he's never seen me happier. And, and she said, it's because I love what I do. And Jay, that is way better than me making an extra 50 or hundred thousand dollars a year by, by cutting payroll or whatever. I just love the fact that people who work at Aesthetic Care and people who work for Mint truly love their job. To me, that's about as good of a, of a, a career goal that I could ever imagine. One of the things that I, that I wanted to do these interviews for is because I want people to really know, you know, you speak all the time, but, you know, do you go home and, uh, um, you know, are you a different guy at home? Are you a different guy in aesthetic care? And whatever, and I, because I think that you know, there's a lot of people that write papers. There's a lot of people that get on the podium. But you and I both know, uh, when someone in particular gets on the podium, you and I both know that you 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 can't trust that person. You oh, know, a lot or, of them. Or, or, or who can you trust? And so the point is, I just want to make just a couple of seconds to say, um, you know, I've I've got an opportunity at this point. I, I'm very selective about how I spend my time. And you've done the same thing as I'm thinking here. You've done the same thing with me. This is a place, Mint, uh, and you and Kathy are a place that I, it fills my tank. And I, and I, and I want to be there. I, I'm almost like your employee in, the, in our relationship here at, at Mint because I know that Kathy's going to uh, execute and, and take me by the collar, which I need, you do too, to say, hey, you need to show up here, do this, whatever. And on the other hand, I know you really, you, you love and care for me. We've become friends. It's, it's a place I, I, I love doing these interviews. And I want you, them to know that I've been to aesthetic care. I've walked with you for a number of, of, uh, of years and you are what you say you are. And, and the fact that you and Kathy and I'm, you know, at, at, when we have the evenings off and, and the way that you guys uh, hold hands and love each other, it's, it's, uh, it's really a cool thing to watch. And I, 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 that's just a gift, but um, I, I just want them to know that what you're doing, uh, uh, you do it every day and it's no, it's no BS and I've implemented it and it, and it's freaking working like a champ. And I, and the reason I went solo is so that I could implement the things I wanted to implement. And a lot of that, and most of that is what, what you've taught me. So uh, you know, and real quick before we wrap up, one thing, and I, I love the thing, there's a saying, who are you when no, no one's watching? Um, I will tell you as good as, as I may sound, okay, and, and I think I know how to teach well, and I think I know how to motivate well, man, it's paying attention to it on a consistent basis. Yesterday, on a whim, I had a few minutes, I clicked on a link where we can listen to all our phone calls. All our phone calls are recorded. And Jay, I teach phone skills. I'm very particular that that phone call has to be answered incredibly well, or else all your marketing time and effort and dollars are wasted. And I think our front desk is great. I love these women who work there. One of them has been with me for 14 years. Jay, I listened to two phone calls and both of them made my skin crawl. It was, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What is that? Why was that not said? Or why was that said? So I called my front desk manager and I said, okay, it's time to refocus on this. We're going to have some meetings every week. We're going to play these sample phone calls, not to embarrass somebody, but to learn because it's human nature. You know, maybe I can come into a clinic or in my staff and get people pumped up and get them excited. But if you just stop and never revisit that and make sure it's being done, sometimes you fall into routine. Sometimes you fall into, you know, I do the same job over and over and it, and the quality just starts to dip a little bit and you don't even notice it. So we have two staff meetings every month and sometimes I, I just screw up and it's like, it's been too long since we've kind of focused on the phone. And my assumption was everything's perfect up there. And I listened to some, some phone calls that were really good, but I thought, you know what? It's time to revisit that. And so I think the communication to your staff is so important. I think never, ever stop trying to be great. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you'd like to submit a question for Matt, check out the link in our show notes or send your questions via email. 
If you want to check out our other expert exchange episodes with Dr. Jill Weibel, Dr. Joel Cohen, and Dr. Jay Burns, you can find those within the Mint online e-courses on our website at mintaesthetics.com. We hope you enjoyed today's episode, and we'll see you next time.